Want to lower your cholesterol without taking a statin? If it really matters. Whoa, whoa. Oh, no, it whoa. matters. It, it matters. matters. It matters. T take it from someone who's trying to lower their cholesterol. You realize right now, someone just swiped away. Yeah. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. Paul, it's a video I'm really excited about. I can tell. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, yeah, like, you're pumped up about it. So we're talking about something called the portfolio diet. Wait, so what's it called? Portfolio diet. You told me portobello diet. Porto Oh, the mushroom diet. You know, maybe that would work, I too. I did a bunch of research on the portobello so that diet. That is not going to be particularly useful for today. We'll do that I do like portobello stuff. Me too, but we'll do it in the new year. I, I must. <laughs> I got to turn the font up on my okay. phone. That's yeah. you, I'm sure you texted me portobello yeah. diet. No, so portfolio oh, okay. diet. So there are, there are lots of diets. We talked a lot before. We like to talk about ways that you eat, not specific diets. But this was a specific diet that was studied at like a uh, academic institution level to yeah. see whether or not this diet could reduce cholesterol and compare it to a statin. One of the nuances yes. I like about this diet is it doesn't restrict you from any specific foods. Right. It's more of a displacement. Right. If you stuff your face with this certain type of food, you won't have room for the other food. Yeah, they didn't talk a lot about what uh, the other stuff. You have to eat certain things, but they didn't yeah. talk about all the rest no, of the stuff that makes up your diet. Right, and they didn't they, they didn't really say don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat that. It was more like eat this, eat this, eat this. Okay, so this I is like in the in the like the late late nineties, early two thousands. Wait, this is twenty five years 25 old. Twenty five years old. You're like, why are we talking about it now? Come on. Okay, so. It was done just down the road from us at the University of Toronto. The lead investigator, the kind of pioneer behind this was the Dr. David Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah. Shout out to Jenkins. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for this diet. Yeah, he may be familiar to you because he pretty much invented the glycemic index. Yeah. Which yeah. is amazing. He's still working at the U of T as a professor. He's an endocrinologist. Yeah. And so I reached out to him by email. This poor guy. And you like know what's really cool? What? He emailed back like within a day, even <laughs> though he said, I'm not in my office, so you, you know, you might not yeah. get a hold of me. Yeah. He emailed back. How very, old is he? He's 83 years old. Wow, and he's still working away. Yeah, very kind. Appreciate you responding. So the, the first thing I was like, well, why, why are we talking about this 25 years ago? If this worked so well, why, didn't, why wasn't it a thing back then? Well, yeah. the, the short answer was a couple things. I bet this isn't going to be a short answer. It actually is. Okay. So plant-based eating was not very popular 25 years ago. And certainly was complicated to do well. It's becoming a long answer. Yeah. And then the second thing is because of what we talk about a lot of times is who funds research. Oh, so beef and dairy. Bias. And there is bias. And there's that, that industry really funded a lot of, of nutrition research. So it was complicated to get stuff done. Right. Okay. So the premise of this diet is that if you eat these four things, it's going to lower your cholesterol. Yes. And it's going to approach the benefits of a low dose statin. And this has been, wow. if you look in PubMed or research, we'll attach a couple of research articles for you. Um, very, very comparable, which is amazing, I think. Now remember, we're telling you things you can eat. We're, yes. not, we're not telling you what not to eat. Okay. That's the beauty of this thing. It is the beauty. Okay. So, number one is plant sterols. Yeah. Okay. So, these are a specific molecule that, as you can imagine, they end in sterol. Mm -hmm. They are similar to cholesterol yeah. in shape and size. Mm -hmm. And what they do is actually they bind in the small intestine to the cholesterol receptor. Right. So, we talk a lot about cholesterol. And a, that our bodies make it and that we reabsorb some of it by our liver and some of it in our colon. So we're trying to think of ways to get more of it out of our body and not in our bloodstream. So one way is if you could reduce the amount that gets absorbed from our colon. Right. Right. And if you think about it, I mean, like we were discussing, there's only, there's a, to oversimplify it. Yeah. Either you're going to reduce the amount you're going to absorb in your colon. Yep. Or you're going to increase the amount you're going to pass through it. Yep. Or once it's in your blood, you're going to increase the amount that's cleaned up by the liver. Right or you're gonna decrease the amount that the liver is producing and putting out in the blood. Those Ex are the four things. Exactly That's right. It. So where sterols work is in the small intestine at the area of absorption of cholesterol. And we've talked before about, well, if I eat cholesterol, it actually doesn't affect my blood cholesterol very much. That's very true, like 20%. 80% is from the liver, but your bile acids are there. So you're right. reabsorbing not just dietary cholesterol, but other forms of cholesterol. So what a sterol does, it actually binds to the cholesterol receptor. In the gut. In the gut and does two things. So one, by blocking it, it prevents cholesterol from being absorbed. And because it's not taken up very readily, mm -hmm. it spends more time there. So it's not just that it blocks it, but it actually blocks it for a longer time. So cholesterol is like, imagine like you're in like a river and you're trying to, you're trying to get out of the river. Someone's reaching for you to pull you in yeah. on the river. Yeah. Well, the sterol is there. That's a terrifying analogy. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that. But, but so sterol. Why do you think of a defensive line on a football team? <laughs> sterol is just hanging on and you're going by going, oh no. And yeah. then that's it. So you're gone. Yeah. So, so plant, cares your cholesterol. It just went over the falls. 
So plant cereals are found in some foods, um, but they're also um, fortified. So kind of like uh, vitamin D, uh, sometimes it is, or calcium, particularly in some juices, mm -hmm. as well as margarines, stuff like that. Yeah. So plant cereals, that's number one. Get some plant cereals, one to two grams, very small amount. Okay, so if you do survive that horrifying river experience, the next one is fiber, right. the Uber driver of the gut. Ooh, okay. Right? Because it just transports that stuff right through your gut and doesn't give you time to absorb that cholesterol. But see, I would think more like a dump truck, though. <laughs> right? Maybe the guy that picks up the green bin yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's true. Right? But the Uber driver, because, well, how does fiber work? Fiber is a insoluble substance that sort of you ingest. Yes. And you're not going to absorb it. It's going to transit through your digestive system. Yep. And along with it, carry a lot of the stuff that we don't want to absorb. Yeah, it makes, like, it makes like a yeah. gel and your cholesterol sticks there and Bob's your uncle. That's the simplest way to think about fiber and it's, a, and it, and it's you know, how much fiber you need, 10 to 20 grams a day. This is for this diet. I mean, some people would even recommend 30 to 40, but for the portfolio diet, it was 10 to 20. That yeah. was kind of their sweet That was point. way back when. Inflation, it's 30 to 40 now. <laughs> That's right. And it's one of the simplest, simplest things to get in your diet. Right. A any kind of Plant-based plant food has fiber in it, right? Yep. And really, it's you know, if you're trying to look for food without fiber, it's kind of hard to do. You yes. have to go to the ultra-processed aisle in the grocery store to really find the non-fiber foods. So Great. whole foods, they're going to have fiber in it. Okay, number three was soy protein. So they recommended consuming 25 grams of soy protein. So you're like, well, what, what is it about soy? Well, soy is very unique in that it causes upregulation of the LDL receptors on the liver. So our livers are exposed to your blood that has cholesterol in it, and they have receptors that bring the cholesterol back in to be recycled, essentially. So they've upregulated these numbers of soy protein specifically because of its makeup, increases the number of receptors to increase the amount of cholesterol that gets taken up by your liver, so lowering your blood cholesterol level. Okay, so where am I gonna get soy from? So, uh, particularly edamame, mm -hmm. from soybeans. So, so yeah, so edamame, tofu. Tofu, Yeah. why do they always say, and you said it too, firm and extra firm. firm. Yeah, it depends who you're talking about. Yeah, firm and extra I've firm. I've seen that before, especially Because it like can be really iron. soft and crumbly. Oh. Yeah. Is it, but the nutritional value, I thought too, for the firm and extra firm is better, I read somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure, maybe it's because yeah. of water content. It's mostly, maybe. I think it's mostly because of water. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Leave a comment, All right. answer to that. So, Sorry. who doesn't love tofu? Yeah, lots of people, unfortunately. Probably. Probably. But it's better than it used to be, especially when they were doing the study. Like tofu yeah. is not very good, not very accessible. Then, yeah. And I think there were not a lot of recipes. Now no. it's, it's used in everything. It nice crispy in... tofu. Oh man. I like tofu. I think about tofu is it absorbs all the stuff like the, the sauces you're cooking with. Sure. It's like a sponge. Right? <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started with the sponge. All right. Okay. And the last element of this diet is nuts. You're nuts. Yeah, oh, and I'm nuts about nuts. I do like nuts. And I, I told you my favorite nut is the chocolate covered almond. It doesn't count. No, the almond part does. Walnut should be your favorite. Yeah, that's your make that's walnut, your favorite. Make walnut your new favorite. I do like a good pistachio. Okay. All right. So, the great thing about nuts is they have uh, mono and polyunsaturated fats. They do. And that's gonna because you're eating the nuts, it's gonna displace all the bad stuff that you're gonna eat. Wait a uh, second. I thought you were gonna say, hey, this is my favorite unsaturated fat because I'm all always about poly. Ah, uh, anything with poly. I know you're always good. You always make a joke. I do anything with poly. Okay. Is good. Sorry, so yes. they, they decrease LDL particle number, yep. they increase LDL receptor clearance, so yep. you're going to get rid of it in your bloodstream, and they decrease VLDL particle number. Number, yes. And what's cool about this diet is that when they compared it to lodostatin, mm -hmm. lodostatins were reducing cholesterol like in the range of like 30%, mm -hmm. and this study was more than 20%. That's comparable yes. for a non-pharmaceutical option to right. reduce your cholesterol. So we're not saying ditch your statin and change to this diet, but it's something to consider and maybe it would allow you to lower your medication. Mm -hmm. Or if you were on the bubble of requiring medication, it might prevent you from kind of going over to that side. Yeah, because you're eating all this healthy food, you're not going to eat that bag of all dressed chips. And, and I think that's so many things, right? When you fill your diet, like when you get stuff. full with other good stuff, you're not yeah. going to have space or interest in the other stuff. Yeah, if you eat real food, you're going to displace the junk food. Yeah, now Hopefully. you know it. And, and uh, cholesterol's a problem. I don't, don't listen to what other channels say that cholesterol's not an issue. It's, an it's issue. not the only issue, right? Cholesterol's no. an issue, sugar's an issue, triglycerides yeah. are an issue, mm. inflammation is an issue, yeah. lack yeah. of exercise is an issue. However, it doesn't mean cholesterol's not an issue. It's 100% an issue. And if you don't believe that, swipe away from this channel. <laughs> Well, I'm, I mean, we respect the fact that you might, you might not agree with how important cholesterol is, but 
because there have been some studies that, that haven't shown, you know, lowering cholesterol reduces all cause mortality. I'm not sure, but we know that very high cholesterol, like sort of that familial high cholesterol, yeah. does definitely lead to heart disease, cardiovascular events. Right. Now you know. know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about what you think about this diet and the cholesterol. Thanks again to Dr. Jenkins for responding to us and sharing his insight of, and doing the research to get this to get this study done. Dr. Jenkins, thank you. And thank you for still contributing to the scientific community by still working into your 80s. Amazing. The diet must have worked. Amazing. Remember, you are in charge of your own health and you're in charge of what you eat. Absolutely. We'll see you next time. Jenkins, amazing.